Good morning from Panhandle Outdoors, America's only daily outdoor TV show. Your source for fishing, hunting, and information for folks who enjoy the great outdoors. Now sit back, relax, it's Panhandle Outdoors. Good morning, folks. Welcome to Panhandle Outdoors, and welcome to the final show of 2016, the final show that I'm doing here in the studio. We're going to have starting our best of the series of, the, of this year. We're going to start running them t tomorrow and on through Christmas and also. Glad to be here, and we're going to talk about this year in review and all, and got some great pictures and all kinds of stuff. But first, as always, our weather brought to us by Haney Technical Center at the corner of Baldwin and Highway 77. This second semester will be starting soon. Run by and check out some of the courses they take there. We're going to have a, a pretty decent day, high of 70, low of 46. Water temperature is hanging in there at 66 degrees, pretty steady right there. The tide chart brought to us by Kent Forest Lawn Funeral Home and Cemetery. We're looking at a low tide at 646 this morning and a high tide at 537. But as I mentioned the last two days, we're in a neat tides this week, but next week will be some really good strong tides. Not a lot of movement there. Marine forecast, north, northeast, at about 5 to 10. So it'll be, be a pretty good day today. The sun's coming back out, so this is going to be looking good. Let's take our first break, and we'll be right back. Okay, welcome back. Let me first explain the shirt I have on, because some of y'all are going to be trying to read it and all. I just want to explain to you. I don't wear a lot of hoodies on the show, but this is comfortable. A uh, gal bought this for me recently, and what it says, uh, right here it says, I am haunted by rivers. And that is the last phrase in the movie, A River Runs Through It. It's a life story of Norman McLean, and if, it's my all-time favorite movie, and I always showed it to my classes when we started the fly fishing unit because it's such a beautiful place, and, and it, the whole family revolves around uh, uh, the love of, of fly fishing, and, and uh, uh, Dad was a preacher, and it's a great story. took back in the 20s and 30s in Missoula, Montana. And what a... Uh, and if you haven't seen it, I'd recommend you watch it. But in it right at the end, and there's really a club now, sort of a, and I'm, I guess, part of that club that just a fanatics about that movie because it was such a well-played movie, and and uh, and just good. So if you maybe want to watch a Christmas movie that's not a Christmas movie with the family, that's a good one to watch. So anyway, they they're doing shirts and other paraphernalia from the movie. So that's where it comes from. His last words as an old man, he's still fly fishing, and he says, "I'm haunted by rivers." So we which is a positive thing, okay? Uh, a couple of pictures. This, uh, really, this is a series sent to us by my buddy Chris Carroll. And, and uh, well, let's read it first. Uh, when you're out in the great outdoors, you never know what to see. These are pictures sent to me from my brother who lives in Tennessee. While out walking the fence line, he discovered this hawk, which probably died trying to catch lunch. He was caught in a barbed wire. Uh, Merry Christmas, Chris Carroll. So let's look at a couple of these pictures. He, and this is really sad, but this is nature. Uh, he, he was probably chasing something. Got a couple of, here's another picture of it, how he got sort of caught up in there. You just hate to see this, but it, it happens, and, uh, and there's nothing really we can do about it. So that, you know, I hate to, uh, to show you all those pictures and all, but uh, here, that's on, on the negative side, but here's one on the positive side, all, all kind of ways to go fishing. This is taken from the Beta Bridge. I don't know if you saw this the other day, but here it is. This guy, uh, I don't know really what happened, but <laughs> he drove out. It's north of the Beta Bridge, and y'all probably saw it on the news, but I thought uh, he made a good fishing picture. He's out there. It'd be a lot easier to fish from the bridge instead of driving out there, but you can make all kinds of jokes of it. So anyway, uh, I wanted to uh, share those pictures. Also, I didn't get to finish up the other day. I want to get it finished, the, the uh, deer study and the results of, of this past year. Uh, of last year's deer study as far as FWC biologists and all. I've got, I want you to look at, uh, I want to finish it up today. So it's the last show of the year, so let's get it done. First of all, look at this picture here. This is deer management unit. And we know a different color. Uh, most of the viewing area is, is in that color right there, the uh, lavender color. We're the deer management unit one, D1 in the panhandle, okay? D, D1, then right north of us is D2. You know, we have different rules for the area. So when I want to talk about D1 and D2, D1 is on the bottom, D2 is on the top. Now here's a, what I thought some fascinating statistics, okay? Okay, so we'll go all the way down to the bottom, D1 and D2. Everybody see that? D1 and D2, okay? We had, this is a sample, 435 people harvested 181 then, uh, in D1, then D2 had a little less hunters, 317 harvested 169. Okay, so that, that's not that big of a deal on that one, but what gets fascinating, Okay, this is the, by this is season statewide now. Okay, bucks 
Let's look at this. Go from top to bottom. Bucks archery. There was 10,904 harvested. Crossbow had 2,698. Muzzle loader. Look at that, folks. 6,900. The general gun. They harvested 43,000 bucks. Not sure. I'm not sure about that. Anyway, the total harvest of bucks last year was 64,223 in the state of Florida. Now go down to does, and you see a lot more does. Okay, look at archery. More more does were killed in archery than uh, uh, in, in than bucks were. And the same can be said for crossbow. But now when you get the muzzle loader, look at there. Look at the discrepancy. Only 900 does were killed in muzzle loader, and then general gunned about half about half of them. And then the total of those is 38,000. So that's a pretty good harvest last year in Florida. Let's move on really quick. Uh, here's what sat, uh, a couple of things fascinated me. Go down to the bottom, D1 and D2. We had this many uh, hunters were in D1, 16,000. And then uh, D2 had 14,000. That's statewide now. The only place to get close would be that right there in the middle, D, D unit of C4. That's around the, uh, let's see, Columbia County, that, uh, the uh, Ocala National Forest area. So that, that's why we have so many hunters there. Uh, next slide. Uh, this gives you how many dark gray. That's where a lot of hunters, and of course the Florida Panhandle in the area I just mentioned, the Ocala on there toward Daytona and over toward Jacksonville. Those two that have the most hunters are anywhere in Florida. Okay. And I'm surprised around Tallahassee, but look around Orlando and St. Petersburg and Tampa, you got more people. You just don't have where to hunt down there. That's why they come up here and hunt. Uh, I won't go through all these. Bay County had 2,300 hunters and all, but uh, look all the way down. What's up? Gulf County had 1,600 right there in the middle. I'm just, Gulf County, Jackson County had 2,900 hunters. Okay. And it uh, goes all the way down. Let's go to uh, Liberty County. There, uh, Liberty County had 2,700. I know you can't read all this. I'm just going to. Uh, but what surprised me, if I find uh, Walton County, way down at the bottom, Walton County and Washington County, see those two? Walton County had 3,087 hunters, and Washington County had 2,300. That's a lot of hunters for Walton County. I, and I got to figure maybe a lot of those guys, uh, a lot of folks over there are hunting into Eglin and all that, but that, that's, a lot of, that's a lot of hunters right there. So, uh, and so here it is by county, if you want to look at hunters by county, and you can see in the panhandle, let's zoom up in the panhandle. We've got more hunters west of us and east of us. And we've got heavy hunters. Franklin County just didn't have that many, because, but that's a great place to hunt down there. It's one of the last few places where it's not crowded. But you look at the Walton, Okaloosa, Santa Rosa, just a bunch of hunters right there. All right, and that takes care of that, that deer stud. That was done by the FWC biologists and all, and it's fascinating to see Nothing earth shattering as far as the information. Most most of the hunters and all are in those pockets. We do get. I remember when way back when the first hunters started coming up. We called them South Florida hunters, and at first we sort of resented them coming up there and hunting, coming up here and hunting with us. And then we got to know them, and, and they were just like us. And they would they would camp outside the Robert Brent area, and and we became friends with a, with a lot of those guys. And then they they learned how we did things and all. And, we had a mutual respect. They'd stay away from our hunting area, and we'd stay away from their hunting area. Uh, and if we had dogs running, uh, we'd call them on the, on the radio and all. So it turned out real well, and we sort of welcomed them each year. We sort of looked forward to seeing them and, and uh, got to know them and all. So, uh, and, and they appreciated us sort of accepting them, and it turned out really well. But uh, at first, I think everybody has a, has a little bit of standoffishness to when people coming in from out of town and all. But if you get to know the folks, they love the same things you love, and and as long as you got room and all, you welcome them and all. Okay, let's take our break and we'll be right back. Ah, right, welcome back. I want to congratulate Captain Bobo Hobbs. He just got his captain's license for the umpteenth time, so he's going to be a captain for at least five more years. And as we, I saw him yesterday at breakfast, and we had a good talk. And as far as I know, and we started talking about it, he's probably the oldest captain. Or, I know he's the oldest captain in this area. that's still working. And maybe the oldest captain in the state, if not around, maybe in the, in the whole south. So anyway, if you get a chance to fish with Bobo Hobbs, you need to. Okay, so we'll talk more about Bobo later, but congratulations, Bobo. I want to give, uh, I want to talk about, uh, real quick about this situation here. Adam, you know, Gail and I joined the Southeastern Outdoor Press Association, and, I, you know, we've been in about five years now. And I, I first was asked to join way back when the book came out, and, and uh 
uh, Al Hubbard came to me, wanted me to join. He was a member, said a bunch of good folks in, and I did put it off and didn't join. Then when I started a TV show, Stan Kirkland said, he was a member, said, you need to join. So we finally joined maybe five, five, five years ago. So we went to the first meeting. They have meetings all over the Southeast. It's just a group of outdoor communicators. They're writers, they're some photographers, and but mainly they just, you know, love the outdoors. And, and I wouldn't know what to expect. And then Walter and Whitney joined also. And they just welcomed little Whitney with open arms. And they opened, they opened arms up to us. And I mean, when Gail and I first started going, we'd, you know, you have dinner, had dinners and different things, four, about three or four day convention. And we, we got to one of the first couples that came up to us just, and introduced themselves. Uh, and and it was, they said, hey, I'm Wade Bourne. This is my wife, Becky. And they're around our age. And we just, we just hit it off. And so when we'd have dinners and all, we'd all sit at the table with them, be three or four couples. And we just... And I, I didn't know, you know, I just knew they were friendly, outgoing, good folks. I could tell right away, and we chatted and all. Later, I find out how, how big Wade Bourne was in, in the field of outdoor communication. And I started, and, uh, and uh, we became friends before we found out all about him. But I just, I want to re give you a quick biography of Wade Bourne, because if you're doing any kind of watching TV and all, you've run across a Wade Bourne. He's from Clarksville, Tennessee. He was the president of, high school of his high school class and went to the University of Tennessee, majored in English, became an Air Force pilot, uh, then, uh, then got his master's degree and met his wife and all, and, 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 uh, and ended up, he, he founded Wired, Wired to Fish and Wired to Hunt. It's a syndicated show. 280 stations is syndicated to across the world. It's the largest syndicated uh, show, outdoor show on radio in North America. And he just has a great voice. He's an editor. He was editor of Ducks Unlimited magazine, senior writer, uh, senior writer for Bass Masters magazine, co-host of Ducks Unlimited TV, and that was his passion with duck hunting. He loved to duck hunt, and we boy, we hit it off. You can imagine in, in legends in the induction hall of fame and uh, just all kind of things. And he Sunday school teacher at the first Baptist church there in Clarksville is a Wade born. Sunday school class, and the irony when Wind and Walter moved up to Tennessee, they were outside, or not too far outside of Clarksville. And that's where Walter has a business, and they were visiting church, and they actually went by Clarksville First Baptist, and went to Sunday school class without knowing that there was Wade Bourne at the door. So that was the irony in all this. But you can see what kind of class, what kind of, what kind of guy was very, very supportive. And so we, we and his wife Becky, it was it just was such a sweet sweet lady and here's a picture of them right here this is wade and becky Bourne, and i say that because wade has just passed away folks we got a call the other day got a message that uh wade born had died unexpectedly of a heart attack and of all things he was he's got a family farm in clarksville and by now clarksville built around got 100 acres sort of on the edge of clarksville at one time he way out in the woods 100 acre farm and uh fifth generation in the same house and he uh, was out cutting a Christmas tree and by himself and his wife was out of town and all. And so uh, anyway, they, uh, they, uh, they sent us a word. It's just heartbreaking. What a, you know, wonderful, wonderful folks. I just want to give a tribute to the world of outdoor communications lost a giant. And I know you didn't know him, but I, did. I know you've been affected by, we've been affected by he and his, his family and all. So our condolences to Becky and, the, and uh, Hayden and Haley. And uh, we were, uh, we we're going to miss y'all, and uh, we hope to see hope to see you soon, Becky. But if y'all are watching the show, uh, our condolences and, and God bless your family, especially this time of year. And you reflect back uh, each year, you know, you the same way. You you lose you lose people. You sit here this year and, and next year, you wonder, oh my goodness, who's going to be? You don't worry about it, but you know, I look back, I think about Ray Wishard. I talked with Mr. Ray Wishard for 40 years, and sitting here la this time last year, he told me he wouldn't be here this year. I wouldn't believe it, but. Uh, we've lost so many people, and I have friends who've lost friends and family who, who've lost uh, close folks. And our, it's always tough this time of year, and try to try to spend some time with folks who's been like that, and just call them up and tell them you're thinking about them and all. So I, I did want to m mention that. Okay, so let's get into the uh, to a drawing. I, I did. I, I want to say too, and I told my students this always: run by and visit some, some folks, especially during the holidays. If you're, a lot of kids are home from college, and I always tell them that when you come home from college that first year, run by and see your grandma and granddaddy, Aunt Susie, Uncle Joe, and all that, because 
out of all the things that they don't want a present or they want one thing from you, and that's your time. They want to just talk to you. They want you to, to, go, to go over there on, to, on the bar and get that snack you always did when you're a little kid running there grab a snack or grab an apple or orange or, oh, Grandma, what you got in the refrigerator? They want you to do that, you know. So uh, run by and see folks and all and, uh, and visit with them, especially just take time during the holidays to do that. It's a special time of year to do that. I want to encourage you to do it, okay? Now, let's... Uh, Let's give away, I want to give, I meant to give away something each break, and I forgot to last break, so we're going to actually give away two of our prize packages. It has Jeff Peck's uh, video in it, a walk through nature, all kind of stuff. I just collect this stuff during the year, Redfish Magic, uh, really nice prize packages, and uh, we, we're going to have, we've got a couple more left, so I'm going to give away two during this segment, okay? And the winner of this one is going to be the first one, who, Jeff's good about putting your name on it. It's come by the Fox 28 Studios. And by the way, I'll have some decals here. If you don't win, you're welcome to come by and get some decals uh, right here in the studio here on my table. Okay? You're going by. Well, the studio is going to be closed a day or two, but it's going to be open the rest of the year. The winner of this one is going to be Corey Brookins. Phyllis, I know you're watching for Corey to, to win that one. Corey Brookins won the first one. And the second winner is going to be Corey played football at Mosley. and actually played football at Florida State. Okay, and the winner of this one is going to be Ken Jackson. Congratulations, Corey and Ken, on winning these two packages. I'm going to give away one more prize at the end of the show, but first, uh, let's take our last break, and we'll be right back. Welcome back to the final uh, live show from Panhandle Outdoors for the year of 2016. But let's right now look like our fishing game times. We're looking at 6:46 to 8:46 this morning, and 7:07 to 9:07 tonight. And during the holidays, we'll try to have these posted online. So uh, let's talk real quick about y'all have been so good coming by and getting these these wristbands and making a little donation for Alicia Stewart. She and her dad were on the show last week, and okay, so we'll update on it. She and her mom are settling in Gainesville. They have a place down there, and about three days after Christmas, they're going to go in and, and deliver a uh, young uh, Team Flash, and they're going to uh, do an open heart surgery right away. So we're going to uh, so we're going to leave this here during the holidays. Uh, Kristen is at the front desk there. If you come in, tell Kristen you want to uh, make a little donation. All good turnout. We've had a good turnout. We appreciate all that. So let's move on. I wanted to say. Uh, uh, a lot of we're going to get ready for winter fishing. Always during the holidays, we do some winter fishing. You want to target speckled trout. Speckled trout just absolutely, when it gets cold, they're going to just bunch up like that, and they're fun to catch. And they're good to eat at Christmas time. Of course, the, uh, the wood's going to be full, and we'll talk about that later. But I want to, I want to reflect back real quick on, on this year. It's been a wonderful year. The next year is going to be even better. Uh, as always, a thank you and the sponsors, the, uh, you are the viewers and sponsors on, on everything we've done. and. Uh, it's going to be uh, it's going to be just an exciting year, and it's, we have a unique situation here in Florida Panhandle. And to be able to bring you this message here on television every morning is just special. And I, I don't take it for granted, and I appreciate it, and I work hard at it. And it's because of the, the uh, what we do and, and the result we have. But I want to mention one thing: talking about goals for next year. You know, so many people are giving, uh, so many people give, uh, and all kinds of things, especially <clears throat> for kids for Christmas. And rightfully so. You have your toys, uh, toys for tots. You have the guy, the, the DJ up on the tower, bringing in presents, and you have all kind of clubs doing this. And you have uh, uh, so many people giving to to kids for Christmas, and it, it's a heartwarming situation to see so many people giving and, and coats and all that for kids and all. And but you know what? I, I, I mean, this has really been on my mind this year, and I guess because I retired from teaching and I still. You know, teenagers have a special spot in my heart, and and, and when they're kids and all, they, they get a lot, and because they're so protected and all. But once they become, you know, I'm talking about from the 13s to the 17-year-old age group, and wouldn't it be nice? I, I was thinking about if we could start a little group that would give Christmas, outdoor Christmas presents to these teenagers. And uh, I got to thinking, I, you know how I am on acronyms. I, I first thing I thought, what's the acronym for that? And I, I'm gonna call it uh, GTO. Getting teenagers outdoors, okay, GTO. I don't know if they'd let me do that for the car people, but anyway. But let's think about doing this next year, and if some of y'all will help me, I can't do it by myself, but some of y'all will help me. It would be nice to just have a, get, a gathering place, you know, where the, you know, where the kids are, like, uh, Salvage Santa has all his bicycles and all, and Mike does a great job of that, but wouldn't it be great if we just targeted a little bit of those teenagers, those needy teenagers, 
that would I can promise you that I've had kids in class and, and, and they you know they they they're so interested in this stuff but never been exposed to it. Give outdoor prizes, outdoor uh, gifts like a, a compass is uh, a little compass and all. I mean I know they got them on the phone and all, but they just love compass. I, I wrote down some things: uh, compasses, masks and snorkels. Uh, how, State Park Pass, go to State Park, man. It wouldn't be cool. Uh, bow, uh, even little metal detectors, get them, just get them outdoors, get them away from, from all these electronics and all. You'd be amazed. Camping stuff, like little tents and all, little little things that do, uh, just, you know, let, let's think about that. If y'all are interested in doing that, we'll flat sure, that, sure do it next year. And that'll be one of our goals, having a, because our, our kids are hit really uh, good about all kind of, Wow, 10,000. Uh, I started adding them up all over the area and all. It's, it's well over 10,000 just in this community by one group. So it, it's, it's well done, rightfully so, and, and I appreciate it, and I know you do. But let's next year maybe think about targeting some of these teenagers with some outdoor gifts. That would be cool. If y'all want to help me, we may change it. If you've got a better acronym than GTO, uh, we'll, we'll use that. So anyway, let's be thinking about that. I, I've always been... Uh, uh, lately, that's been on my mind, and, and uh, we, we may try to kick it off in just a little bit at a time, and, and might get a club behind it or something. But anyway, we're going to wrap it up. Uh, now, let's start winding down for 2016. Folks, we've been doing Panhandle Outdoors for 10 years. Can you believe that? For 10 years, and uh, only because of, of great viewers like you. So we appreciate it, and uh, like I say, next year is going to be the best yet. And we're going to start in between now. We have all kind of some fishing and hunting and all kind of neat stuff. Uh, that we did over this past year. So we have a lot of video now the next six or seven or eight days on into after after New Year's, okay? So we're gonna give away one more thing this year. It's gonna be a safety harness. One more safety harness, and you know, of course, you're gonna call me, and uh, who, call me after the show, and whoever calls, I uh, have it right here. Uh, Jeff and uh, Kristen, and them have it right here. And so that's gonna wrap it up. For, for this year, again, I want to tell you how much we, we appreciate the viewership. I want to thank Jeff Peck for doing just a professional here every day and behind it and doing all kinds of stuff with video. I've got to thank Gail Chester. Gail has just been, been a sweetheart to me, and uh, she just, all my, everything I've ever done, she's been behind me 110%, and, it, and I, I appreciate it and love it. Okay, I love you, honey. You all have a great day. Have a great Merry Christmas. Thank you all for watching Panhandle Outdoors, and God bless. Thanks for watching America's only daily outdoor TV show, Panhandle Outdoors with Winston Chester, featuring hunting, fishing, and other activities and information to help you enjoy the great outdoors. Join us next time for Panhandle Outdoors.